the city of Dayton was, uh, was ignited into uh, really racial unrest uh, because of a uh, police citizen interaction that ended violently. So the incident was um, an officer, a police officer, confronted somebody for whatever reason and the man pulled something out of his waist and he was shot dead by the cop and it turned out to be a smoking pipe. And I don't know what happened between the two to make that confrontation, why the cop was doing, but that was the incident and the paper said the citizens of West Dayton, which is the African American uh, side of Dayton, were concerned. And, and I was insulted by that, like, hey, come on, there's lots of people concerned. And I put on my Central State t-shirt, sweatshirt, I think it was, and, and I went to the rally. The speakers were eloquent in, in raising up the emotions of the people uh, to be appropriately offended by what had happened, the death of that man, and what that meant for all the other things that had happened that they could express that were denying their rights and, 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 and equal citizenship in, the, in this community. At some point in time, a man came pushing his way from the front to the back, coming straight towards me. And I didn't know what he was about doing, but what he did was he grabbed me by the arm and raised it up in the air, so there, and then he pulled me toward the front, and he began to holler, it's not true. Every, all white people aren't this way. You know, look at this man, as he is here. And now I was an example of the, you know, the exception to whatever they might have been generalizing <laughs> about, you know, the oppression in, uh, of the white people, you know, the white power structure. And when I got to the front, right in front of the speakers, they stopped the rally. They said, go home now, get home before the National Guard gets, gets here and before they declare martial law and barricade your neighborhood. The rally was over. And there I was, hundreds of people between me and my car. I would say I was um, vulnerable. Right. to animosity, and it felt like there was a you know, barricade against who? Me? Yeah, because I'm white. So I started walking away through the crowd back to my car. I hadn't gotten more than a few feet when I heard behind me, let's kill him. <laughs> and I had this, uh, a thought that I didn't want to be killed from behind. And certainly the adrenaline was, you know, it was a fight or flight, I'm sure. I turned, facing me was three men. And they asked me, what are you doing here? And I started to babble, you know, because I care. And the man in the middle hit me. He hit me in the face, hit me right in the jaw. And as soon as he did it, the two men on each side of him grabbed his arms and prevented him from doing anything else. They grabbed him, he couldn't do it again. And a woman walked up to me, she grabbed me by the arm, Put her ear, put her mouth to my ear, and said, "Where's your car? Let me help you. Let me help, help you get to your car." And I said, "It's over there." <laughs> and she held my arm and walked with me through the crowd to my car. <laughs> I got in the car. She put her head in the window and said, "Do you know how to get out of here? Can I drive you to the bridge? Can I go with you to the bridge?" And I said, "No, I'll be fine." I didn't know whether I was going to be fine or not, but I said that to her, and that was it. Last I've ever seen of her. And you got to the bridge. And I got to the bridge, I went on my way, and National Guard was called, and there was martial law, and we had mm. one, of our, one of our two riots in Dayton that, at that point in time. So, well, you know, what do you make of that? But for me... Right, what do you make of for that? For me, uh, I... I I needed to express myself, I needed to be present, I needed to stand up in my community. That was the sense that I wanted to be able to do that, and there was the opportunity. You stand up, you say what you need to say, whether it's just your body, your voice, your words, but I stood up and my made my presence, you know, I went there. A part of that situation. A part of that situation, and, 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 and one man saw me and declared <laughs> that you know, there was something meaningful about me being there, the man who grabbed my arm. Mm -hmm. uh, the man who hit me, um, he had his own uh, needs, uh, which was certainly destructive of me. If he had, had his way, I suppose he would have hit me again or done worse. And of course, we know that in subsequent riots and uprisings, people have been hurt and killed, right. uh, have been caught. 
in places where they shouldn't have been at the wrong time and so forth. Uh, but the two men behind, beside him stopped it. You know, they acted out of some other place in themselves. Right. And then a woman came to me and, and regardless of whatever harm could have come to her, she stood up to whoever might do anything right. and protected me. No one bothered us. No one said anything. She just walked straight to my car. She and protected you by protected being with you. By being with me. That's right. Mm -hmm. By mm -hmm. being close to me. Right. Yeah. Right. And you accepted this. And then when she wanted to come in the car with you, however, you said, no, no, no. I, I don't, no. I'll, I can get back. I'm OK. Bravado, yes. Yeah. Well, or, or maybe, you know, Concern because if she'd gotten in the car, you know, there, there, I was, I, I think there was that sensation that, come on, you've done enough. Uh -huh. From other things I've heard about you in the past, Tom, the twenty-year-old Tom Walrab, I guess that's about how old you were at the time of that rally, was certainly capable of some sort of aggressive response or preemptive aggressive response to this, these guys who had said, let's kill him. I, I couldn't have struck back. I mean, if I would have struck back, I think it would have been over. But so you could have. I know I could have. You could have. I know I could have. And I a lot of people in the situation might, might have. Okay, I mean. that may be. I don't know that. But, but what I do know is if I had, I would have been, that would have been, you know, my number called. I think when you first told me this story a long time ago, you said, you know, humane, calls forth humane. Humanity calls forth humanity. I wasn't ready to jump into an aggressive act there. And because of that, had I done that, you know, maybe I would have been fighting all three of them immediately. Because I didn't do that, so they responded in the same way, in a, in a, a, a calming and then a protective way.